The goal of this video is not to be a tutorial, but more so if you have a vacuum bagging system, um, it's to help you improve on it. I've probably done 600, 700 resin infusion vacuum bagging layups when I was in prototyping. And the system I'm gonna show you is basically the parts and pieces I want to help ensure I have very few pinholes, very few voids, um, no trapped air. And so I'll go through each piece. So with this system, you'll be able to basically assemble or create the pieces that you need to, you know, resin infuse carbon fiber. This is a trolling motor mount. I think it was my first ever YouTube video, this lower bracket. Um, and this held 30 pounds. This is just four by four, 12, two by two on the top. Um, I think it's nine ounces total and it can hold 30 pounds of weight. Um, or a carbon fiber handle for my Mora. If you look at this, that's a heck of a lot of carbon. Um, I know there's a little bit of a myth that carbon creates rust on metal, but if you protect the metal from oxygen or if you insulate the metal between the carbon with fiberglass, you can do it. And that's what I did here. So this is my favorite knife. I actually use it to as a steak knife all the time. Um, or do G10. This was hand laid G10, but it would have been a billion times better if I did it with vacuum, which is these plates. These plates are gonna be used for, uh, to make a Hobie H-Crate, a carbon Kevlar one with a solar panel on the lid. Here's the pump I chose to buy. Uh, it's a Robin Air 15 or 15,500, five CFM, third of a horsepower. It can pull 30 inches of vacuum at sea level. Um, just one thing, if you buy this pump, it is not leak free and it does emit oil. So be careful if you have exposed cloth to the atmosphere when this is running, you can get some of that oil on your cloth and you can ruin some really expensive carbon fiber or Kevlar if the petroleum from this exhaust port right here gets into the atmosphere and then onto your cloth. So keep that in mind. Um, I make sure everything's under vacuum and protected before I run this, this pump. The other thing too is it's not leak free. I've got this running to my reservoir and you'll see that I have a ball valve. The whole point of this ball valve is to protect this, which is 100% leak free, from the leaky diaphragm in this pump. The benefit of having this is it's leak free, you shut the ball valve, you can turn the pump off, you don't need to run your pump the entire time. The purpose of the reservoir is to add volume to your layup. Um, so if you think about it, you have a small part under vacuum, like a knife scale. The total volume inside this chamber is massive compared to like a 12 by 12 inch layup. So what this does is minimize your leak. And the other thing is it allows you to control vac vacuum and multitask at the same time. So if you want to slow how fast your bag pulls down, all you have to do is throttle the, the ball valve. And that'll allow you to pull a really slow vacuum, adjust your bag, and make sure it's right, make sure there's no bridges, uh, make sure your resin line and your vacuum line have no bridges. And then from once you have all that right, you just open the valve all the way. Um, the other part too is multitasking. So let's say I'm pulling vacuum, the pump is running and I'm trying to pull a full 30 inches. Once this gets to 30 inches, the multitasking piece is that all I have to do is shut the ball valve. I know that this is leak free. And after I do a leak test on my vacuum bag, I know that's leak free. So shutting this valve doesn't matter. So in terms of multitasking, once you have your ball valve shut off to your bag, you can leave the ball valve here open, you'll have this giant reservoir of air that you can then use to pull vacuum on your degassing chamber. Let me move that. So you can pull vacuum on your degassing chamber, degas your resin, might take 10 minutes, but the whole time that you're degassing your resin, this will still be at 30 inches of mercury. So going to the, going to the degassing chamber, to me, this is super important. If you, you can look at it this way, if you're going to pull 30 inches of vacuum on a laminate and you haven't 
degas the resin, you're going to boil the resin under the bag. And by boiling the resin, I mean basically you're doing the same thing that you would have done inside the chamber. You'll notice it bubbles and the air comes to the surface and it's trying to escape. Well, if you do that under a bag, the air might escape to the surface, but if it's escaping to the surface behind the resin front, it's not going to make it out of the bag. That's where you get shrinkage and pinholes where the fibers cross over, which if I zoom in, you can see some like dirt filled pinholes. That was weak vacuum and I didn't degas the resin. I mean, this still held 30 pounds, but that's where those came from. The other reason I bought this chamber is to stabilize wood. So this is a three quarter inch uh, tempered piece of glass. It's compatible with stabilization resin. And for me, I'm gonna still make knives for camping and fishing. So I thought this was a good option. The one with the polycarbonate lid is way cheaper, maybe $40 cheaper. And the final piece is more of a luxury item. Um, I know that you guys are hobbyists more than likely, but if you can afford it, or if you have a company and you don't have one of these, absolutely get an ultrasonic leak detector. Um, I bought this one used, so I didn't pay full price, but it's the Amprobe, I think 300. This will save you so much time and money trying to hunt down leaks you can't hear with your ear. Um, all it does is make static through really, really cheap headphones. And the louder the static gets, the closer to the leak you're getting. When you hear that static at its loudest, you know you have a leak. You smash down your tape, leak goes away, and then you hear ambient static. When it comes to resin infusion and vacuum bagging, there isn't a better leak detector. Um, I've tried the ones on, the, on YouTube that looked like they work, but when I got them, they absolutely don't work. Um, this thing is awesome. So it's a luxury item. The way to avoid needing one of these is simple. Pull 30 inches on here, wait one hour. If you don't lose a quarter inch of vacuum, your bag's sealed. From there, go ahead and infuse. If you do lose more than a quarter inch of vacuum, you've got a leak. And that's assuming you know that your reservoir is completely sealed. I absolutely know zero air leaks from this chamber because I have the ultrasonic analyzer. So once you know that, you know any leak you have comes from your bag. So you, there's, there's your two options, ultrasonic analyzer or a leak, leak test. Um, my rule of thumb is quarter inch. There's other people who do it for one day. I don't think that's necessary, especially if you have an ultrasonic leak detector. So um, that's it. I hope you got some ideas from this. I mean, really, this is not meant to be a tutorial. It's more or less to help you build something better than what you might already have or answer questions as to why you're getting pinholes. Um, and for that matter, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Have a good day.